From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. He can't drive an engine or hold a hose, but this furry new firefighter has a very important job. Everybody's loving him and he's playing around with everybody. Plus details on a new vaccine with the potential to save lives. It is encouraging that there is something out there that could probably help. And we'll take you on a hike that's crazy fun. And we do want to wait. Thank you for joining us here on Montana this morning on this Friday, August 25th. I'm Kagan Harsha in for Augusta McDonald. Well, we begin this half hour with this. It's a photo that's going to be seen in history books for decades. Donald Trump's mugshot. It's the first ever of a former U.S. president. It was taken right after Trump surrendered at the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta yesterday on 13 felony charges, alleging that he conspired to overturn the 2020 presidential election results in Georgia. After posting a $200,000 bond, Trump put that mugshot on X, formerly known as Twitter. It was his first post to the social media site since his account was reinstated. The Fulton County prosecution is the fourth criminal case against Trump, who remains the Republican frontrunner in the 2024 presidential campaign. So now that Trump has been formally arrested for what's believed to be his final criminal indictment, our Stephanie Lee Burgeon is bringing us a big picture look at the four cases against him, how they're different, and what's next? Four cases in four different parts of the country. That's what former President Trump is now facing. The president's legal troubles are complex, and in all, he's been charged with 91 different criminal counts. Two of the cases are in federal court. Those stem from Department of Justice Special Counsel Jack Smith's investigations. The other two are in state court, one led by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, and the other by DA Fonnie Willis in Fulton County, Georgia. Now, even though the cases are playing out separately, there is some overlap. The federal Washington, D.C. case and the Fulton County state case are both centered on Trump's alleged attempts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting and certifying the results of the presidential election. The indictment alleges that rather than abide, abide by Georgia's legal process for election challenges, the defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. The two other cases are unrelated to 2020. In New York, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg filed a 34-count indictment against Trump for allegedly falsifying business records. Those charges stem from a hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. Trial is scheduled for March 2024. And in the federal case in Florida, Trump is facing 40 charges linked to alleged mishandling of classified documents and obstruction of justice for resisting calls to give those documents back. Trump has two co-defendants, Walt Nada and Carlos de Oliveira, and trial is set for May 2024. We are likely to see numerous court filings and hearings as each one of these cases works its way toward trial. After each indictment, former President Trump denied any wrongdoing. Stephanie Liebergen, Scripps News, Washington. Miller, hard to believe we're entering our last official weekend of August. Where has the year gone? I know. We got big plans. You, anything with the before it's over and summer's gone? Well, you know, football starts this weekend, week <laughs> zero, so I'll be in front of, you know, this is the season uh, part of the year that my wife says she's a widow. Yeah, because you football widow because I'm in front of the TV every not, not only that, but you got pro football getting ready to I was start. I gonna say, here. is that mainly college football for you or you're I a big NFL? I'm guy? a big I'm a big college football fan. Georgia, now, right? Georgia. Now, yeah. if you had to choose NFL or college. Oh, definitely NFL. So Ooh. my problem with college is that your team's not doing well. What's the point? There's no <laughs> playoffs. Unless you're a Grizz or Cats fan. That, that makes sense. Well, you know, they've ex they're expanding the playoff system, so your team, whoever it may be, actually may have Notre a Notre Dame, maybe, yeah, maybe. Could be. Let's yeah. see if they bounce back. All right, Notre Dame playing in uh, Ireland. That's tomorrow, right. That's as, right. As a matter I'll be fact. there. I oh, wish. Oh, wait, yeah, really. <laughs> All right, let's take a boy look, look at, at that. that. We should just just walk out of the studio so, and show that the for the next hour. That is just absolutely gorgeous. I could stare at that all morning, but we got work to do. Let's take a step back in time. Yesterday, it got a little hotter than anticipated, up to about 90 degrees, and we're not done with the 90s yet. Uh, we're going to cool down briefly today. We do have some 90s in our future. We'll tell you more about that with the main forecast coming up. Overnight low, just a little bit milder than normal. It was a dry day yesterday, but you'll see uh, for our annual average rainfall of 14.31 inches, we've already bested that. We're about two-tenths of an inch over, and we've got more 
rain in the forecast, but look at those moisture totals for the month and for the year. We're in pretty good shape here in the Magic City. Temperature-wise right now, we're at 58, humidity at 49%. It's dry out there. Winds coming out of the north at about 8 miles an hour. We got temperatures mainly in the 50s and 60s this morning. It's clear, but what you don't see there, surface smoke. We'll talk about that and what, what the final weekend, like Kagan said, of August is shaping up to be weather-wise. We'll do that here in just a bit. And I apologize to your wife, Miller, on your behalf for, for leaving her alone on all these weekends to come Ooh. here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Already forgotten her. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> so bad. Thanks, I love you. Thanks, Miller. Yeah. <laughs> Well, imagine waking up and finding a dead deer likely shot just a few feet from your front door. Well, that's reality for Mary Jackson at her home near North Park right here in Billings. She alerted Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Jackson telling us game wardens do believe someone might have used an air rifle to poach that animal. FWP confirms they're investigating, and that's something that Jackson and others in her neighborhood appreciate. I think it's a, a terrible thing to happen here in town in any part of town that there's uh, firearms being discharged inside the city limits. It's going to get out of control if we don't say something. So as long as we say something, maybe it won't. And many of you might recognize Mary Jackson. She's better known around town as Crazy Mary, the owner of the popular local seafood truck. Billings police are also looking for two robbery suspects this morning who kept officers busy yesterday afternoon. First, right around 12 o'clock, police say a man tried to rob the U.S. Bank on Grand Avenue. He allegedly demanded money from an employee, threatening he had a weapon before fleeing the scene. Police described that suspect as being Hispanic, wearing cut-off jean shorts, long sleeve striped shirt, a dark-colored neck gaiter over his face, along with sunglasses and a straw sun hat. Then, just four hours later, after that crime, a different man is accused of robbing a Montana Avenue business at gunpoint and getting away with cash. That suspect described as being white, about six foot one with an average build and medium length black and gray hair. He was seen wearing a gray t-shirt and blue jeans. If you have any information about either crime, make sure to contact the Billings Police Department. Well, coming this fall, a new vaccine that's designed to help kids ward off RSV. Uh, Montana mom and dad that we first introduced you to last year are hopeful this vaccine is gonna spare other kids and parents from going through the absolute nightmare they experienced for 10 days with their family. Rich and Jessica Baxter's son Ethan spent more than a week in a Billings hospital just struggling to breathe after he caught a pretty severe case of RSV. He ended up being life flighted from his home in Bozeman and had some very rough nights. And it was like Friday at daycare. They're like, hey, he's got a bit of a fever. We'll keep an eye on him. And then by Sunday, we're in the hospital being life flighted to Billings. The night that we noticed uh, it hit really hard. You could lift up his shirt and you could just see his ribs like pulling in and out and in and out. Yeah, tough to see that video as a parent. Thankfully, we're happy to say Ethan made a full recovery. Doctors tell us that unlike most shots, the RSV vaccine will not contain either a live or killed sample of the virus. Instead, this vaccine is comprised of lab created antibodies that the body typically generates during an RSV infection. Well, in human years, the newest member of the Billings Fire Department is only 18 months old. But in dog years, Winston, the certified therapy dog, is closer to 15, a much more appropriate age for a first job. This morning, Q2's David Jade tells us about the department's new program that landed that pup on the payroll. The Billings Fire Department's newest member has been on the job almost two weeks, and already he's made a lot of new friends. He's the first therapy canine in the department's 140-year history. Winston is part of a new dog therapy program here at Fire Station 1. Winston, a golden doodle, is a certified therapy dog and has been on duty since August 11th. Everybody's loving him and he's playing around with everybody. Firefighter Cameron Nash says firefighters stay calm during calls and the dog will help them decompress when they arrive back at the station. There can be a lot of stressors that happen throughout the day and being able to come back to the station and talk with the crews and have a dog back at the station to pet and hang out with um, really reduces stress for me for sure and I'm sure it's the same for a lot of other people as well. Winston reports for work at Fire Station 1 because his owner and handler is Deputy Fire Marshal Becky Biggins. When he's away from the station, Winston spends a lot of time with Biggins' family. Just like we need breaks from this kind of environment, the therapy dogs, they need that break as well. When he accompanies her at work, he is available to the firefighters. Stress levels and first responders do get increased because of the nature of what we see day after day. And so um, having anything we can in our back pocket to help make life better is going to be important for sure. 
Camilla McCullough, owner of Blue Creek Canine, donated the training for Winston and Biggins. As dog trainers, 95 percent of what we do is, is teach the person. McCullough determined that Winston has a temperament and is a good fit for the department. She guided Biggins in the training that led to Winston becoming a certified therapy dog. Your heart rate will go down, your blood pressure will go down, and actually you just can just breathe and thereby you would uh, off, you know, de-stress. De uh, so in that regards, we actually have a physical reaction subconsciously to our dogs. Winston is often with Biggins in the office and goes out with her to schools and other education visits. I'm grateful that I get to utilize him in that capacity as well. The best part of my day. He improves my day every day. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Well, it's looking like a great weekend to get outdoors. And if you're wanting to explore a new waterfall, yeah, we've got just a suggestion for you. This is beautiful Big Timber Creek Falls. It's one of a few hikes in the crazy mountains that's easily accessible. It only takes about a mile to get up here. And as our Jackie Kaufman reports, even more surprises await hikers who journey farther up the trail. On the Trail is sponsored by St. Vincent Healthcare, now part of Intermountain Health. You don't have to go very far up a trail to be impressed by the crazy mountains, but here at the Big Creek Trailhead, it's the entrance to a lot of different hikes in mountain lakes. We're not going very far today, just up to the first falls, but even just a few feet up the trail, you see a lot of mountain splendor. Nestled between the Yellowstone Valley to the east and the Shields Valley to the west are the isolated and intimidating crazy mountains. Just love it up here, I love the crazies. With 120 miles of hiking trails circling Crazy Peak, the eighth tallest mountain in Montana, the crazies have lush forests, several lakes, and a fair share of local lore. It's something about a crazy woman, some people say. One long-standing myth, the mountains are named for a settler woman who wandered into these woods and went mad, haunting the woods for more than a hundred years. Legend has it, the crazy lady's still out here. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is that these mountains have long been a sacred site to the Upselica Crow people and were famously the site of vision quests, including those of Chief Plenty Coup. We learned that it gave the Crow Indians crazy medicine. It gave them lots of, it was their strongest place. Seen on the trail is the Sullivan family from Bozeman, who is rounding out an overnight backpacking trip, the last hurrah before the start of the school year. A good trail for kids. I think so. You can walk side by side. You can at least get to the first falls. Blue Lake, Granite Lake, Twin Lakes are all popular destinations right up this trail. We went to Twin Lake. It's a hike Linda Iverson makes every year with family, friends, and dogs. I think it's very accessible. It's yeah, very it's accessible not real steep. That I took my, I've taken my parents on it before. You know, it's. It's a good, a good day hiking. While steep trails and tall tales might make this mountain range a bit intimidating, hikers assure us it's very inviting. In the Crazies Jackie Coffin, MTN News.